Hi everyone, I'm Mike. This is the Sunday Art Show and this week I'm going to do an impressionist painting of some ballroom dancers using interactive acrylic. And uh, the plan here is to take a slightly different approach to what I often do. I'm not going to do any initial drawing. So you can see that what I've done is just added some burnt umber there straight onto the paper. And when I say I'm not going to do any initial drawing, there, there will be drawing, but I'm going to begin by just moving this patch of paint around on the paper, keeping the paint nice and fluid by using the water bottle. And the thing with the interactives is I can just uh, add water to keep them workable. So if I was doing this with normal acrylic paint, you could, probably could do it, but you have to be, you know, a lot, lot quicker. Um, and there's less time to think, you know, which may be a good thing if that's what you're after. So there's the torso of the guy. I've just added a few pounds to him with that wayward brush stroke, which I didn't intend to do. So let's that's all right, we'll make, we'll make the painting a little bit bigger. So there's his arm. So we can come in and do a little bit of, you know, drawing with the brush. Continue to move that paint around. So there's his uh, forearm, then his elbow is kind of here. Kind of disappears that way. Then there's a fair bit of shadow in under there, which sweeps across the woman's body tucks in under there, that's her lower back, and then her arm comes out here, rests on top of his, and then her hand is kind of there. But again, we can do a lot of this just from the single patch of paint. So there's his beginnings of his collar, beard, nose, hair, and then need to change the line of the shoulders here. I'm getting a little bit lost. Hang on a sec. Um, oh, I see. So that comes up there a bit more. Down there. There we go. That's a little bit better, I think. Still something not quite right. Um, and then we'll put in an indication of this arm. There are some hands here. And then her head is tipped back quite a bit, but there's quite a strong jawline here. Hair, which went a bit wayward, so we'll change her hairstyle. Now I've consequently, that's moved her arm into the wrong spot, but I think I'm just going to, well, perhaps we'll tweak it over here a little bit more. That's okay. And then rather than actually try to draw the dress exactly, we'll just put in some energy lines like that. And then keeping the paint you know, active, we can start to kind of tease out some more of this tone. put his leg in a little bit more of a dramatic position. And some indication of a foot there. And then again, go back into that initial block of tone. Now, normally 
you know, you show bloopers at the end of a video, right? Or at the end of a movie. But I wanted to show you, before I get into the actual demo, I wanted to show you a couple I tried beforehand, which didn't work out all that well. And um, the and I wanted to sort of explain what I learned from these mistakes and how it informs the final piece. OK, so this one, I put down a block of blue. I started to move it around. And as you can see, I've got the beginnings of a couple. And then I added some uh, yellow ochre and then I came in with burnt umber and I just lost the proportions in in trying to move the paint around. So having done that, I had another go. And the other problem is there's not much energy in the painting. It doesn't really look like these two are moving. So here's the other go I mentioned a moment ago. And same problem. OK, so the guy looks very static and the proportions aren't quite right. So, you know, it's it's a really good exercise to do because it forces one to look at things in a different way and try a different technique. So the other thing I realized I was doing was I was painting them the figures too small on the paper. So I had a crack at this one and went larger. Um, this one's still dry. Well, they're all still dry, actually. Um, but uh, started with the burnt umber, added in some sort of drawing and energy with the bit of dry brush. Then I came in with uh, cerulean blue and I added a patch of that over here, some highlights on the waistcoat. And I started to lift out some figures off in the background here watching this couple, and I quite liked that effect. And then I did something similar with the orange, although the lift out of the figures didn't work so well, added orange to some of the figures. And again, I wasn't too happy with the proportions. The guy looks too static. So that kind of informed what I ended up doing with the demo. OK, so we'll get back to the, the demo next. And then, you know, as you'll see, I, I personally feel this one goes a lot better. It's a lot simpler, but I'm not sure I would have achieved it if I hadn't made these three mistakes beforehand. Now we've got to get the, the other leg in, which is partly obscured by the by the dress. So I'm going to leave a gap deliberately and angle his leg out here. So maybe his knees there and then boom, there's the other leg. And then angle that foot in there. So it just makes it a little bit more dramatic. Um, I'm sure if the dancer was watching, watching me paint this, he'd be like, this is all wrong. You know, the, the, uh, the, it's all in the wrong spot, but I don't care. So, <laughs> so we're going to sweep her dress over there. Um, and Another dramatic line coming through there. And I'm not even sure I want to include any feet. I think I might just leave it like that. Um, so the cool thing with the interactive, hopefully what I've demonstrated to you is obviously it, it is acrylic, but it kind of becomes its own thing if you start to use it to kind of sculpt the paint and use the water spray bottle almost as much it's, it's almost as important as the brush, OK, and how you're moving it around because it kind of takes on its own life. And then, you know, you can see I've barely painted anything really. But to me, this painting does say, you know, we've got a couple of dancers here. I'm, I'm tempted to add a bit of a cast shadow um, and I'm also tempted to uh, add a little bit of reflection in the floor. And I'm just wondering whether I should do either of those things. Perhaps just the reflection, I think. So I'm going to go back into the, the tonal area. I'm going to just put a little bit of a mark there and there. And then I'm going to spray that bottom bit like crazy with water. And I think that's enough. I'm going to let that dry now. So here's a better look at the finished painting. And I hope what I've demonstrated today is both that you can use this interactive acrylic in a slightly different way than is perhaps conventional. You know, so I haven't really been filling in blocks of tone as such. I've just been moving the paint around for the most part. As mentioned earlier, the water spray bottle is just as important as the brush. 
and you can see that in the texture that is coming through in the hair and the, and the woman's hair and the arms and stuff and pretty much the whole painting to be honest um, and then the other thing is that i think a really uh, valid way of being creative is is to rather than slave over a single painting for hours it's okay to take the approach i'm going to do four or five quick paintings and then see which works the best and kind of learn from each iteration so here you know there's just one color it's just burnt umber so it's very much just tonal and i really have minimized the amount of work i've done you know i mean i've barely drawn the woman at all really but by picking out key blocks of tone and thinking of the complex subject as, as shapes of tone and then deliberately deviating from that reference to make a more dramatic pose and choosing what I want to depict and what I want to leave out, then, you know, I've come up with something that I'm very happy with and I hope you enjoyed the demo too. Uh, anyway, hope to see you next Sunday for the next episode of the Sunday Art Show. Um, please remember to like, comment and subscribe and thank you very much for watching.